Hello and welcome back to my channel, I'm just defrosting from in the microwave but today, I've done fish on my channel before but I just literally had a fillet already done and then I cooked it with some potato and veg today I'll be actually filleting a fish and showing you how to fillet it and cook it so the way you can cook fish are either on the hob like grill fried now on the hob grill fried or you can actually oven Drop it in front and put it in the oven. I'm going to show you the on hob grilled method because it's easier and quicker. And I'm going to pause and start this video. Today I'm doing a lemon sole. So it's a round fish. So you get two big fillets out of it. Um, I'll be showing you exactly how to fillet it, exactly how to plate it, cook it, everything. So I have some fish. Well, I did fish once before my channel. I think I did a piece of plate. I've never actually filleted one before. Well, I have, but not on this channel. So I thought, it's coming up to Vlogmas. I need a video every single day. I need a variety of stuff. So I do hope that is it. If you do, give it a massive thumbs up. Subscribe down below. And let's get into the video. My fish was frozen. I think it's okay now. So you do need a filleting knife, and I haven't got one. Not here, with me anyway. So I'm going to make you maybe zoom. Can't zoom in anymore. I might zoom in. Wait, let me just go. And I'm going to show you how to fill it in place. Fill it. It's called a lemon sole. So I'm going to show you on the chopping board how to fill it. it. And then I'll zoom out and you see the hobbit when I cook it. And I would do it with a fondant potato, which is basically cooked in a load of butter in a circle shape. Or Dutch potato, which is mashed potato with egg yolk, not the white egg yolk, butter. And then um, piped in the oven. But my potatoes I've got are quite small, so I don't know whether either of them are going to be possible. I wanted to do a Dutch potato, but I think my potatoes are too small. But we'll come to that hurdle when we come to it. I'm only going to be doing um, veg and potato for one portion, but the fish is for two. So this fish was four, well, was four pounds twenty-five. So it is a reason. It is reason. It is, but it's expensive. But get in the sale and like the reduced. But this was only one pound and four pence. So it is really well reduced. Literally paying a quid for a tiny bit, for a massive bit of fish. So, to see this fish, well, actually, mine's been frozen for a while, so mine can't really tell this. Actually, you're going to get. Oh, the tail's flopped off. Well, you don't need tail anyway. You're going to need a pair of scissors to cut the fins off anyway. But you should get. What, what I meant by two fillets. There's two fillets on the front. Two fillets on the back. It's lemon sole, but it looks like a place. So you, if you've done a place, you do it the exact same. And so you check the eyes. And there might be gunky bits in there. And then you can keep the bones for a stock. So if you want, you can keep bones for stock. So the first thing you do, cut the tail off. You could do with a fillet and knife. Try and got so I might struggle with this. I do it at work and college and stuff. I don't. So you want to cut down the middle. This is a rubbish knife for this, but I don't really have a better. So you want to get your line. You want to cut down the middle so you've got a line. So I'm going to get a plate to put my fillets on because you're going to skin them as well.
That plate might be in the way if I put it there. So you've got your line down the middle right here. Make sure you've gone all the way through. Then we're gonna embrace. Be careful when you run your finger down, because I've caught my finger. We're gonna go under the under the bone. If you don't have a filter knife like I don't, you can, if you have one, use one. But if not, the flexiblest knife you have. And it can't be a teeny weeny knife, it's got to be like a biggish knife like this, it's got to be flexible. And then you just go across under the bone, until you get all the way to the edge. And then when you get to that part, so you're basically going underneath, flat on your knife like that, and you're going under, under, like press like that, under, under, like that, under. And then the fins just still be on. And then you have one bit of, that is a fillet. It's two portions, but the portion that massive, so. And then you simply do the same on this side, so you go, there might be a bit of blood coming out of the head. So you go underneath. You basically go underneath but flexible with this knife. So you go. So you go underneath, but as closest to the bone as possible. You don't want to have to go over it and scrape off fish. You want to have all the fish off the bone. Maybe get a bit of J cloth or a bit of wipe to wipe down your chopping board, but you need to really, really well sanitize it. And I would recommend, well, if you were in an industry, you would have different colour board. You'd have a blue one for this and a green one for your veg. But in this case, I don't. At home. I don't. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to just get a different board. You will need scissors later, I'm going to cut that bit. So now you've got two fillets. You don't get much out of a big fish. So you basically turn it on the back and do it the same. I'm going to put the wrapper in the bin because that should have been done first. But the fins and that go in the bin, but the actual bones you can use for stock. You can make your own fresh fish stock. So you can have like a nice gravy with your, well it's a bit like fish gravy, but it's not really gravy. going to cut down the middle again. It's basically the exact same procedure. Run your finger down but be careful when you do run your finger down. If you can't run your finger down then you're missing a bit. If you have got a fresh fish, you need to make sure the eyes are not cloudy. So down the middle, and then when you get to this point again, you're going to go underneath your bone. 
it's a bit different to just having a fillet done because you'd have that ready and it normally it would probably come with the skin on and then it's up to you. most people cook it with the skin on and then flake off So this sort of fish you would probably cook with the skin off. I've got a solid, got a bit that didn't quite defrost. It's been a bit of a dilemma. <laughs> So now you want to, when you get to this point, you want to just get your knife as far as possible and run it down as close as you can to the bone because you don't want any bone. You don't gut, you don't gut flatfish. This is a flatfish. You don't gut the fat fish. You do, however, gut a round fish. So, if you're not liking guts and blood and gore and stuff, probably stick to flat fish. And you're going to turn your fish around and you're going to do the same again. So get your knife under the blade and you can actually go higher up on this side. So when you can get to the highest point, so this fillet should be bigger because there's that bit there, the fillet stops there, but on this side there isn't that bit there, so you can go all the way up. So this last fillet should be the biggest fillet, if not, then you've lost a lot of fish. And you might not have gone higher up. Might not have gone high enough up, but you're basically going under the blade, under, flat. get to this point and you get near the near the um, fins you can cut round look if you look at this one compared to that one it's a lot longer so now you've got your fish so you cut the head off, you need to make sure everything's well sound tight and probably put your bin out, like the bin out and you do your bin or your bin will stink. So you're going to cut down the middle of your You're just going to chop it up into little cubes, boil it in some water and some herbs and spices and you're going to drizzle it over your course. So for a portion you'd have half of that fish. So I'm going to plate up well, a portion. So you need to make sure you 
everything well clean. As you can tell, the amount of residue on my hand is a bit gross. Everything behind me is nice and clean, so I'm dead, dirty everything. But, so now it's the point where you do your now. So I'm going to get a pan, any little pan. You don't need like a whopping big pan. Maybe half filled with hot water. So I'm going to put the kettle on. Ideally, you would put like a, um, a bay leaf and some thyme and stuff. I'm going to put a bit of parsley. And we can make a parsley crust, like a herb parsley crust. See, so it's up to you what you do with this fish. There are different alternatives way to do this fish. Like ways to cook. You make a parsley butter and put it on the top and then put it in the oven. And now I'm using the hob, I'm going to move you back. So I'm going to put my fish bone in here to make a stop. You might as well make a fish stop. If you've got the point of not making a fish stop, and you're wasting a lot of bones. So if you get the skin off, then go in. Hold the end. Actually, you might put the skin on. I don't know if it's easy enough to come. Side cooked. You also need a little pan of like potato and veg and stuff that you're going to serve with it. Actually, act as a, as a stop. Salt, pepper, a bit of parsley. You don't want it to be cloudy, so we are sieving this. We are sieving it and then thickening it with a bit of flour later on. So thick, well, depends how thick it is. So it is something we're going to sift. So we are sieving this. So give it a good mix around. That'll take a while because you're making fish stock. You might have to skim a bit of the residue off because it's not so cloudy and gross. You don't want cloudy stuff. So when you make your sauce, instead of, you know in sauce, in like, a, in a white roux, or a blonde roux, you normally do, you normally do butter, flour, and milk. So, so, so the liquid in your sauce is this fish stock. I'm going to make it in this once the fish stock is out and in a jug. 
but you want to reduce that down for a while, put it in a jug, and then that, that's your liquid for your sauce. Instead of milk or water, you use your fish stock. So you sieve it and get rid of all the bones, and then the bones go... Well, your bones go in the bin, and, but you've got the flavour out of it, and then you've got like a fish stock sauce. Fish stock sauce. So your area needs completely sanit well, needs sanitising. Because you've had all that fish residue and muck and stuff, you need to sanitise your work top. Get rid of your scissors, get rid of everything. Sanitise your work top. Let me move this out of the way. Sanitise your work top. I'm going to give it a quick wipe. You want to sanitise your worktop, get it all like free from fish. Probably think of fish. I know quite, <coughs> I know quite a lot of people don't eat fish. I don't know whether you can see there, but the pan for the stock is really bubbling. those flavour, fishy flavour. And when you cook this, you're going to roll it up eventually. And the skin side on the top. Or if you've got a blue and green, or if you've washed your board, we're now going to prepare the rest. So, we're going to do and I'm just going to simply slice them with the skin on and we're going to boil them in the water I don't know whether you can see this pan on the screen but if I put it in that one you can't see everything else if I put it on the one that doesn't work So you're going to boil them slice and then we're going to pile, well you're going to then put them in the oven for a good 10 minutes and crisp them up. And then where they're crisp enough you then cook whatever, so this is the point after the potato, because these are too small to make Dutch's potatoes. Or fondant potatoes or whatever. This is the point where it's up to you, after the potato part, it's up to you which what, what veg you do. I'm doing green beans, but at that point you do whatever veg you want. Look at this, this stock is doing wonders. Stock is doing miracles. It's going to be quite liquidy because it's a sauce. 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 So I just show you how to fill it one of the fishes if you want to fill it them now. Or you can... Or you can serve it with the skin on, it's up to you. These potatoes are going to be in here for about 15 minutes and then they're going to go in even for about 10. Actually no, maybe 10 and 10. This fish stuff. I didn't really, you can always wipe the board if you didn't really use the board. Depending on what veg you want to do, I'm doing green bean. So, so you do your own veg, it's the whole fish prep. So now we're going to
Now you want a bit of a grease, grease. And you're going to put some oil on the pan. This should not actually take that long to cook. You need quite a bit of oil. Loads and loads of pans, you've already got three. Do you sauce each stock pan because then you still get the flavour. You don't wash the pan either. Obviously, get rid of all the bones and sieve it, but don't. You need to make sure you've reduced enough. You know how to make a blonde roux with butter and flour? And then feel free to go ahead. But in hindsight, all it is, is 25 grams of butter, 25 grams of flour, plain. Yesterday I did one when I made a vegetable, veggies, lasagna. Tried for my lunch today, it's still half left. It's only two o'clock, so I'm, I'm actually, might be filming a lemon meringue pie, mini lemon meringue pie. Not a large one, like a mini one. I might have time to see that. We've got to half three. No, I've got to about four ish to film. Mm. Mm. This sauce, I think this stock is done because it's been boiling for a long time. Once the potatoes start boiling, because they're actually boiling yet, you then, then it's 10 minutes of the boil. So I didn't measure how much I started with, but theoretically, the amount you started with, you should end with. Yesterday, everything I've used, probably nickel, I used yesterday. My kitchen's really annoying. I've told you this before. I don't have like a table across the middle. It's like all around the edges. And then I can't be behind and showing you exactly what. Showing you, so you just have to. Mm -hmm. um, Jug is not clean. The sieve is clean because I rinsed I properly rinsed that before I went in. Am I might have to use a different jug, I don't know if it's big enough, so we're gonna have to find out. If you do have like a bay leaf and some thyme and maybe even some garlic, bay leaf is one thing you would put in here because bay leaf or bay leaves and peppercorn and a studded onion are the other things you can put they're the other things that you can put in here to have the flavour I'm going to turn my stock off and now I'm going to pour it you can always top it up with water if you don't have enough Yeah, so my stock is quite cloudy. And if I don't have an, if my sauce is too thick. <laughs> oh yeah. You can add, you can add 
parsley to the sauce. Well, you're going to add parsley to the sauce. So now we're going to make the sauce. So you need a bit of... You need In a hot pan, I'm going to use the same spoon again because it's all going to be mixed together anyway. The bones can now be in the bin. I'm making a blonde roux, if you know what that means or what that is. Basically, essentially, butter melted with. flour added we need to make sure you cook out the flour long enough it has to be plain flour cook out the flour long enough 25 grams of each it is just a tablespoon like a large tablespoon of both if you don't have any scales, not everyone has scales. Yes, at this point, I was rushing to get the milk and stuff. Not the sauce here. If your sauce is too thick, just top it up with boiling water. You need to make sure your flour is properly cooked out. properly cook out flour. If you don't cook out the flour long enough it might not work. And now we've got to the point where flour is cooked, you add Yeah, if your pan's hot, I will do that. I will do the add you to Obviously, that's nowhere near enough. But you add it bit by bit or it won't thicken. And if it's long pea, you have to sieve it again. I'm going to sieve. So I might have to go rinse my sieve. So you're basically sieving your stock. And, and if you sort of lumpy, sieve that. Yeah, my sauce is still way too thick. It would be the same, it's a bit like yesterday, but when I made the veggie lasagna, instead of the... If you watched it, instead of the milk, it's the fish stuff. really lumpy then that clearly means you haven't cooked out the flour long enough or one of the stages didn't go over it you have to you can't just add, add a little bit of your stock and then like 10 seconds later add some more you've got to actually cook it out each time and maybe a minute in between each time you add more Making sure I properly cook it out before I add anything in. You will definitely use all your stock. Should have made 500 ml. I didn't weigh it, which I should have done. And if the stock is cloudy, you can skim it, but I didn't. White room, no cheese, 
the white roux with essentially a blonde roux, white roux, blonde, well, blonde say to a white roux, and our cheese makes it into cheese sauce. So without it, it's a blonde roux. I'll leave that simmering for a bit and I'm going to tend to my potatoes so I'm going to put my flour away sieve my potatoes Now I'm going to get a tray mm. This tray will do Oh I'm still zoomed in I think That's why it looks so big I'm still zoomed in I'm zoomed in for the fish don't like, don't completely forget about your sauce because it will start to thick. I'm going to add the rest of this, but I am going to need some more hot water in this because add some hot water. It is really thick. And it's quite lumpy, so we might be sieving it. I need to start to do it. I'm going to preheat the oven. We're going to put the potatoes on this tray. They are pretty much cooked. Not fully, but they are pretty much cooked. Need to leave them in for lap. Good drizzling of oil. A good sprig of salt. You should you should have actually cooked them in salt. I'm going to have the water, it was supposed to be salt water, but I forgot. And put them into last possible minute, and all we've got to do now is pretty much cook the... Well, we've got to cook some green beans, or whatever veg you want. You essentially use whatever veg you want. So you need to sip your sauce, so I'm going to have to rinse my sieve out. I've had, if you've got two sips, then by all means. You don't have to properly wash it because um, you don't have to proper wash it because because you've only drained your stock out of it. So I'm going to put my pan back on. and put a couple of green beans in I'm only literally going to put like a few we're going to do two portions of this one for I'm only going to be cooking I'm only going to be cooking a portion of fish as well so half the fish I'm not going to cook it Add a little bit more water to my stock or my salt. And add parsley. If you want to know whether it's too thick or too thin, the answer is it's slightly watery. Perfect consistency is slightly watery anyway, so.
And then a scoop of salt. I didn't really use that chopping board, so I'm just going to put it back. I can just wipe it because I already have the chopping board. You might need to reheat your sauce. The lumps will be the flour bit that things will cut. So that's the sauce. rinse my spoon. Give this a little mix. Quite watery, but it's meant to be. Now I've got a little pan that I can. Um, I've got a little pan that I can reheat it in later. So. I think when I made it, when I made the um, for the plate, cooked for the plate in my other video, I'm pretty sure I made it soft. But it would have been um, it would have been a fresh fish stock. It would have been a fresh fish stock. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to turn your heat on. Now, fish slice, I've got a fish slice, but the best thing to use is tongs. And my fish slice is dirty, I think. Tongs are probably the best method. So I'm only cooking half my fish. I might cook the smaller two pieces. You want to cook it on the skin side for longer, and the one I showed you how to fill it, how to de skin, because some of you may want to de skin it first. I'm going to cook that one as well. You cook it on a bit of, you cook it on a bit of um, parchment so it doesn't stick to the pan. But the pan also doesn't need washing. This is the one that I de-skinned because I de-skinned it. Show you how to do it. And then I'll save these two. And the dish is sort of coming together. So you so you cook it on that side for a good two minutes before you turn it over. Your sauce is on, fish is on, your veg is on. Check your potatoes. I'm not roasting them with parsley. That noise is a good noise. That noise is what you want to be hearing. And now I need to try and find my fish slice. That might be the easy way to turn these fish over. This video is probably going to be quite a long video. And the reason it's going to be a long video is because it takes time to fillet a fish. I can't rush fillet a fish. If you rush fillet a fish, if you rush filleting a fish, if you rush filleting it, then you waste other fish. You have to take your time over it. If you don't want to fillet it, you can just look, go to my plate video and you can get a ready made fillet, but you don't get the best fish stock.
a proper spitting. I'm going to turn it off. Let it calm down a bit and drain from the fat. finish it off in the oven anyway but I'm going to finish it off in the oven so I need to move some trays because I've got off in the oven and then now you get to the plate part I don't tend to what I'm going to trim film these two pieces but so that's basically a portion and then the other one is another portion so it's two portions of fifth every ounce of one portion if you need double triple whatever you do you know what to do now your plate And you put it in a jug to get it to pour when we get to the plating. I'm going to drain my green beans because they've been on for a while. Sometimes you can make fish paste and, and put a paste in the middle before you roll it, or sometimes you can just roll it. So it's entirely up to you. I think with the other pieces of um, fish, I might just put in some. Um, I might just put in some foil and cooking them if they want a tiny bit of parsley. You can always make a herb crust as well. Herb crust is another way of doing it. So herb crust is something else you can do. Uh, the fish, so normally if I didn't have fresh fish bones, I would probably just use these vegetable cubes, which were one pound 50 from m and eight. Or you can get 10 for a pound at Sainsbury's, but they are a lot nicer. So we're going to get the fish out, but it literally needs a couple of minutes on the hob, a couple of minutes finishing off in the oven. Fishes has uh, broken, but this one we're going to try and roll on the presentation side. We're going to get the potatoes out, and now we're onto the plating part. We weren't roasting the potatoes; we were just like crisping them up. So we're going to. You have these for the fish, but it's all going on the same. You put a potato potato I would say four pieces of pork. I've probably done two portions of potatoes but I'd probably finish make sure you've got loads of oil salt and pepper I'm going to put them onto one side don't pile them up I would say I would eat that for portion. So one of these has um, broken, so I'm just going to try and lift it up and put it on the plate. You, that's the one I filleted, which is understandable. So this one probably isn't going to roll. I've broken it to roll and it's hot. 
left and then you turn it over like so. That's not much fish for a portion. Mainly because you filleted it, you filleted, got the skin off and you lost quite a lot of the fish. The other two portions are better. Now, where are the green beans? Now you put some green beans on. You can either put it over the, you can put some green beans on the side. The fish is a complicated matter. Then this is the point you put your sauce on. You have to check. Oh, well, actually, that sauce is very nice. Oh, it's thick. And then you drizzle it around. You put it around your plate. You don't. You put it around your plate. You don't say put it on your plate. So now I'm going to quickly come and sh show you. So this is basically what it's supposed to look like. But you can do whatever veg you want, and any style of potato you want, and you can technically cook your fish however you want. The only thing you have to strictly follow is the filleting of the fish. So I'm going to try a bit more of this sort of... It's warm, but it's not boiling because it's been off for a bit. There might be bones in it. Like salmon and stuff like that, you pin bone. Once you've got the fillet of salmon off, with any round fish, you get two big fillets and you have to pin bone them with like a fish, like tweezer thing. But on flat fish, you get two fillets each side and they shouldn't have bones in. Then the potatoes, although they're not roasted, they're just like crisped up. They're very nice. I'm not sure if I really need to try a green bean because green bean the green bean. You can taste the flavour of the potato sauce, it's absolutely amazing, the fish is well cooked. I don't know what else to say, it doesn't really take that long, but take the preparation of the fish takes a while. Just cooking ham, very short. Meat potato with flavour on them I'd die for. How am I give a dish an eight? That's how confident I am in this dish. So I know that was a very long video because it takes a while to um fillet fish. But it was my first time showing you, so next time I won't go into much depth and I can do it more quicker. I wasn't talking it through, I could do it in half the time. So yeah, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give it a humongous thumbs up. Subscribe down below. And I'm, I think I'm 13 away from 1K. So please, please, please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want more different types of fish dishes, I can do some shellfish dishes. I've been doing quite a bit of shellfish recently. So I can do some shellfish. And I'm doing mince pies soon as well because it is coming up to Christmas and Vlogmas. And I'll see you very, very soon with another video. Thank you and goodbye.